Hello everyone, this is Walter Fate, and I'm back to bring you some more stories from Reddit. I'm at my friend Drew's house right now, so if the sound's a little different, that would probably be why. I don't seem to get out enough these days. Anyway, today we're once again going to be reading stories about weeaboos. Weeaboos are fans of Japanese culture who take it way too far. Don't worry, watching anime alone doesn't make you a weeaboo, but selling your things for anime merchandise might. Let's just get started with more Reddit weeaboo stories. Stalker Neckbeard Weeb Won't Leave Me Alone Okay, this one is going to be long, but bear with me. I made a Reddit account just so that I could post this shit. I also posted this in Reddit Neckbeards, but I felt like it belonged here too. So I attend anime conventions. I even cosplay to them. And as a female cosplayer, I'm used to advances from creepy weeb guys. But this one is on a whole other level. I met this guy very briefly over the weekend. He was part of the group that I was hanging out with and we only had one mutual friend. He was really nice in person, ignoring the fact that he was overweight and had a neck beard and was cosplaying a Naruto character. But I enjoyed our conversations, then thought nothing of him after the weekend was finished. Then about three days after the con, I got a message on Messenger. I didn't recognize the name, their profile picture was a sexy anime cat girl, and going through their Facebook profile, I didn't see a single photo of themselves. It was all anime crap. I messaged a few friends asking if they knew him. Turns out he asked our mutual friend for my information, and that's how he contacted me. Anyways, I started talking to him and quickly realized that his online personality was massively different to the way he spoke in person. The disgusting amount of XD and Yush and Floof and the other plethora of emojis should have deterred me, but I continued to talk to him because I thought it would be rude to just ignore him. The text got weirder and weirder until he started meowing at me. As a conversation starter, in the middle of conversations, or at the end of conversations. But mostly to get my attention. If I hadn't spoken to him in a while, he would message me mew, or nya, or meow. Disgusting. Keep in mind that this man is probably in his late 20s. I started replying less and less with shorter responses. But this didn't deter him, and he continued. Eventually, after maybe a week of talking, and only having met him in person for probably an hour, he asked me out. It's probably a good time to mention that when we first met, I was whining about not having a girlfriend. Girlfriend. So he knew damn well that I wasn't interested, even before he asked me. But of course I politely declined, because I don't like confrontation. I just said I was seeing someone else instead of telling him he was gross and made me uncomfortable. I thought after rejecting him, he might leave me alone. But alas, he started calling me Fluffy, like, did Fluffy fall asleep? And shit like that. He changed the chat emoji to the red rose icon and sent it to me at random times. He would send me goodnight texts even if I hadn't been messaging him, as well as good morning texts, which I rarely replied to. He also mentioned that he had Asperger's. Seemingly everyone with Asperger's feels the need to tell everyone I've found, and that he learns from other people's behaviors to shape his own, so I took a little pity on him. But the weirdness continued. On the 27th of September, I decided to stop replying altogether. Kind of just didn't want anything to do with him anymore. His messages still continued, though. He was posting parts of our conversations to Facebook without my permission. With captions like, isn't she so cute? He sent me memes. He spammed the, the rose emoji. Then on the 4th of October, when I was on a date with a decent person who doesn't meow at me for attention, this fully grown adult man sent me nya. At this point, I was beyond sick of him. Since I don't like confronting people or being a dick, I wrote out an entire paragraph fit for an essay explaining why I didn't want him messaging me anymore. The exact message was this. Hey, I just thought I'd send you this because you haven't really taken a hint before now and you told me about your Asperger's and how you learn from other people's behavior. So it's probably best to let you know instead of just disappearing. You send really creepy messages and I don't really want you messaging me anymore. Not even my closest friends say half of the stuff you say, and even after politely declining your advances, you still continued. You're actually really nice to talk to in person, and I enjoyed our conversations over the weekend of the con. But you're completely different online than in person, and your texts make me uncomfortable. I didn't want to say it because I didn't want to sound like a dick, and I'm telling you all this not to be an asshole, but so that you can learn what's kind of appropriate to say to people. I went along with the meow thing, but that's a really weird way to get a normal person's attention, and if I didn't reply to your message, it's probably because I didn't want to. So please stop messaging me. Perfectly reasonable, in my opinion. He blocked me. 
Not that I'm complaining, of course, as the disgusting and cringe messages stopped. The reason that I am annoyed is because he learned nothing. Our mutual friend, of whom doesn't even like him that much after I showed him them the things he sent me, showed me what he posted to Facebook that night. It read, if you dislike the mew, nya, meow, or anything odd I say in convos, look at my profile picture and tell me you totally didn't expect something like that. XD. I'm not going to stop being me, so fuck ya. I never asked to talk to him in the first place. Had it been my choice, I would have never spoken to him again after the convention. I was low-key forced to answer back to this weird guy with the cat girl for his profile picture. I didn't really have a choice to begin with, out of being a decent person. On top of that, I never asked him to change the meow thing about him, because if that's who he is, cool. I just asked him to stop talking to me and leave me alone. He completely disregarded the part where he made me uncomfortable. No apology, no acknowledgement. I feel sorry for the next girl that catches his eye and he decides to message, because clearly he didn't learn from his experiences with me. Edit, while none of his messages were thankfully sexually inappropriate, they were just vaguely suggestive and not normal. For example, going into detail about how he wanted to invite a bunch of his female friends to his house and have a cuddle party and going on about a female's touch and the warmth of a lady and shit like that. Not really the kind of person I want to be having conversations with. Edit 2's, and some people are calling me a bitch. I do indeed make judgments on one's appearances, as most people do but won't admit. Naruto fans, and fans that are so into it that they cosplay, have a reputation that is hard to shake. I never gave him shit for cosplaying, just his choice in cosplay, and I thought the description would paint a nice description in you guys' heads. And I have seen enough Reddit neckbeard stories to make judgments about people with neckbeards. The overweight part was just an added bonus. Also, I was in no way leading him on, and I replied as we had a mutual friend. If I ignored him or said something rude, he could have gone to our mutual friend and it could have messed our relationship up. Well, as always, he seems to be hitting on a lesbian, so it's kind of irrelevant why she didn't find him attractive. He definitely sounds like one of those creepy asterisk guys. That shit with posting parts of private messages and saying how cute she is over it? Would anyone really put up with that? Okay, so if you watched my last video, some people didn't seem to think the Attack on Titan thing was cringy. So let me turn this up a notch. The comments seem to indicate that this might be a Koreaboo rather than a Weeaboo, but I don't know. Let's go check it out. Okay, I apologize for that. I was laughing for about 10 minutes over it earlier, though. Let's read one more story and then call it a night. I have some Halloween specials to work on. Oh, this one involves Steven Universe as well as anime. Nearly grown-ass weeb screams at me over a drawing. So I go to an art school, which means I've run into my fair share of colorful characters. Yes, that includes quite a bit of weebs, to the point where the teachers had to ban any anime-related art for their assignments and the only big incident I experienced was being sh shouted at by a little pump look-alike for saying that I hate anime. However, most of the weebs are nothing more than just minor annoyances instead of straight-up jackasses. Except for one who I'll call J, because that's the first letter of his name. J is an overweight Hispanic weeaboo who has never matured during the three years I've known him. Seriously, the man's 17 and runs, screams, belts out JoJo references, throws things across the classroom, and shrieks in a high-pitched anime voice practically daily. He varies between overly friendly, squealing in my face, cueing over how short I am, I'm above 5'5", five five, touching people without their permission, etc., or just being a straight-up rude dickhead. Unfortunately, I experienced the latter just a few days ago. So I was in class, and because I finished the assigned project, I was drawing a Steven Universe character in my sketchbook. Pink Diamond, for anybody who even knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm sure some people in my comments are gonna. Until I suddenly hear Jay yell, Why would you like a defective diamond? Disturbing the class. I was obviously both dumbfounded and ashamed that I now had attention on me, so all I could really say was, Excuse me? That apparently sent Jay into a tirade. 
Pink Diamond is horrible. That effective diamond is not a good diamond. She should be destroyed. How could you like her? And just kept going on and on about how the character I was drawing sucks and that I shouldn't be drawing her. I just responded with an okay. Not really sure how else to handle that type of headassery. I know it's far from being as bad as most of the stories on here, but seriously, this dude is nearly a whole ass adult and apparently has nothing better to do than go on a massive tirade about hating a cartoon character and shaming others for liking them. I'd probably be ashamed if I was drawing Steven Universe fan art and someone brought the whole class's attention to it too. I could probably make entire videos on that fan base like I did with Bronies, but like I said, I don't really know anything about it. Well, anyway, that's about all the time I have for you today. I've got a lot of work to get done tonight, actually. So thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks to all my subscribers, and if you're new here and like the content, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing for more of the same. I will be bringing some spooky shit soon, also some neckbeards, and more viewer submitted stories from my Discord. I'd also like to thank Reddit for the stories I've covered today, and Japan for turning the young people of America into this. Have a great night, everyone, and meow. Or, yeah, whichever.